What's cracking, people? It's your man, Cousin T, aka the Alpha Wingman, representing high level technicians operating globally and beyond. So, listen, the other day, uh, <coughs> while participating on the panel um, with the field master, Ron Wills, shout out to C Boogie, shout out to C Douglas, uh, and the other um, panel participants, it was a, um, a private barbershop style panel that included uh, some lovely young ladies. Um, gentlemen, if you are not a part of the Select Manosphere, I highly, highly recommend that you uh, participate more actively in this space. And spaces like this, obviously participate with the Tom Game Division, participate with the other um, uh, men of this particular tribe or like-minded individuals. But in, in any case, in this particular uh, panel, there was a moment that I can only describe as the mask off moment. Now, <clears throat> just to give you a little background, I have a lot of experience with um, sort of getting beyond the mask or the, the marketing representative mask of women. And, uh, you know, different guys have seen me use my methods and do what I do that was on display at this particular barbershop. And uh, uh, anybody who's interested <clears throat> in attending or uh, participating going forward, hit up the field master Ron Wells. He'll, he'll uh, say yay yeah or nay. But beyond that, there was a mask off moment in this panel where, uh, you know, I presented the group of men to, you know, the women saying, hey, we're not judging and I won't go into <laughs> too, too many details or whatever. But at the end of the day, the women ended up giving an instantaneous response to a question that most men um, would lose their minds <laughs> about. All right. Um, and the, the, the other guys who were on the, the panel, they were like, wow, <laughs> uh, because when women are comfortable enough to um, remove that marketing rep mask, you get this sort of acceleration of comfortability. And the space that opens up beyond that is real life. It's that honesty, it's that primal nature, it is that introduction to the real side of female nature. But without going too far into that. It, when that moment happened, I asked, uh, I thought about it, I asked Ron Wills, I said, you see how uh, this little example show an honest uh, presentation of uh, what women really think? And I asked them, do you think that when we present podcasts and we present content and we present material to men who would classify themselves as either pre-select or non-select uh, you know select guys they're, they're used to a lot of these things but when we present the our material to guys who may not necessarily have experience in these realms and in particular the shadow world space do you think that we may be going too far do you think that there's certain aspects of our experiences, our shared experiences in this space that may be too much for the average man to handle? And without, like I said, I won't go into the sort of back and forth that we had uh, after that. But the reason why I asked that question is because what I've noticed is that a lot of <clears throat> excuse me, men who are outside of spaces like this, they get upset because they have never experienced, they have no reference frame for the content and the discussions that we have in these spaces. And for one reason or another, it, it could, it, it, there are a lot of factors that go into that. That you know we could have discussions and um, you know panels and whatever, 
that go for hours breaking down how society does this and what's set up like this. We have, you know, we're in participation trophy culture where all kids, you know, had to do was just show up, put a uniform on, and at the end of the season, everybody got the same trophy, you know. Uh, but that also got me to thinking, and this all ties in to a question that uh, C. Boogie posed at the uh, at the self improvement summit. It's a great question, and I classified the question that he asked as a wisdom level question. So you, you have lower level questions that are like yes or no, black or white, this or that question that anybody can ask, but there's certain questions that only certain men with certain experiences and skill sets understand how to ask, if that makes any sense. And the question that uh, Sibley asked was, from the sexual side or the sexual world, in that standpoint, what is the difference between alpha and the beta? Um, and... Again, without going too far into that, uh, shout out to my Patreon subscribers. You're going to be flooded <laughs> with a lot of um, post-stomach content. But just to really speak to the, the spirit of that question and, and how uh, I addressed it, um, I basically said that an alpha is a commander and a beta is a subordinate. Now, <clears throat> obviously, uh, therein lies shades of gray. And I did it. I actually did a podcast that I'll link in the description of this one, uh, entitled "Shades of Alpha," that really get into the nuance, um, dimensions of what that really means. But basically, what was being communicated <clears throat> was that uh, an alpha, even though he's a commander, he gives commands. He could command the woman to show him what she likes. He's not afraid or so in his head to. Uh, admit that, hey, this is new territory. We've never met before. I'm familiar with the female anatomy, and I know my body. I know what I like. I'm going to put on you what I enjoy. You show me what you enjoy. Whereas a beta would uh, be fumbling, would be uh, following and, and, and trying to uh, go behind uh, the woman, you know, um, cater to her dictates not willing to take command of the situation. Now, that's just the example, one example of uh, the sexual arena in terms of the difference between uh, alpha and beta. Let's let's take it back to the sports example. Now, a lot of men from my uh, generation, you know, um, you know, towards the edge of the millennial or yeah, the millennial generation, um, we had to fully participate we have to fully involve ourselves in all of the activities uh, of sports we had to go to practices we had to do the nutrition we had to hit the weight room we had to run drills we had to you know partner up and do um, you know buddy activities like buddy curls we had to do buddy push-ups you know if anybody uh, knows what that means shout that out <clears throat> in the comments but if you wanted to play, you had to put in the work. If you wanted to be on a winning team, you had to put in the work. This new era has come up to as the soccer mom can drop you off like five minutes after the practice has started. All of the teams in the league, uh, you know, have these sandwich breaks or, or whatever. And most of the games ended in ties. Uh, because of the, the loose officiating and at the end of the season the quote-unquote championship a, a game ended with all teams and all players getting participation trophies the same exact result so when you attempt to translate that into the real world into the space beyond a space that's governed by overprotective guardians a lot of men are finding that that sort of uh, grooming does not match up with reality. The reality of the real world, the reality of nature, the reality of the human experience. None of those things match up to the re what uh, is required to win, what is required 
to be successful in real life. And that's what's causing a lot of guys to be upset when they uh, hear about the things that men discuss in spaces like this. I think the biggest takeaway from the comparison um, when we talk about the alpha and beta traits or the energy of alpha and beta is admitting that you took um, the road less traveled and that's led you to uh, disappointment, right? When an alpha fucks up, an alpha is like, oh shit, I fucked up. Look guys, I fucked up. Uh, let's let's try this this other way. Uh, I'll I'll do double. You know, I'll I'll take care of it. When a beta fucks up, he's quiet. He tries to cover it over. He tries to blame someone else. He tries to look for an article in the back of the internet. <laughs> Shout out to C Boogie. He tries to find an article in the back of the internet to explain female nature as to why he had to pay. $250 on a date at a nice restaurant only for her to thank him, give him a kiss on the forehead, uh, text her real guy, the pipe him down man, the maintenance man, the ASP uh, to handle that the same evening. So to get back to my original question, is it that select men have too much sauce? Do we drip charisma because we have these amazing acting and vocal and motion coaches who um, tailor our every move, uh, who write all of our lines that we uh, put out there to women. Are we physical specimens because we have uh, amazing genetics and we have a team of plastic surgeons and a team of personal trainers and a team of you know uh, high-end conditioning strength and nutrition uh, coaches are women naturally drawn to us because we copy and we imitate what we believe masculine men do the answer is absolutely not we got the sauce because when we were younger we got pushed down on the line and we got back up. We got the sauce because when we fucked up, our coaches, our mentors, our teachers did not give us a pass. We had to do double the work. We had to do double the wind sprint. We had to do double the weight pile. We had to do two practices to make up for any perceived deficit. If we wanted to play varsity as a freshman or uh, a sophomore, we had to beat the best on the varsity squad. Meaning we had to do as many push-ups, we had to do as many pull-ups, we had to run as many wind sprints as the best on that level. And if we wanted to be captain of the team, huh, we had to outwork everybody. We had to clear the jerseys. Even though we had water boys, we had towel guys, if we were competing for captain, we had to collect that shit. And when we finally made captain, if we lost, it wasn't the coach's job to explain to the team why we lost. To look at those other young men who the, the coach passed over. And some who were demoted so that you could become captain. You have to look at those young men. And you have to explain to them why we lost. And then explain to them why we're going to win the next time. You see, when you're put in those situations, something happens. Something clicks. And I'm going to be honest. Not all men are blessed with the opportunity to have a masculine coach. To have a visionary mentor <clears throat> who can take you through the fire. Even fewer men are blessed to have a master teacher who is on a path to show you the landscape so that you can select your mission. But I'll tell you this, there's something that happened at uh, a young age to men in this space who got the sauce right now. At, at, at a young age, when you're told that you have to go do it again. 
when you told that it's not enough, when you find yourself alone in that weight room, banging out those reps that you know need to happen before you leave, something in your mind clicks and it goes from a chore to an obsession. You see, the thing that distinguishes an alpha from a beta is the obsession with the process of success. I'll say that one more time. Alphas are obsessed with the process of success to the point where we look forward to the extra reps. We look forward to the tour days. We look forward to the smelly ass weight rooms. We look forward to the sweat that comes from doing additional reps. We look forward to the runner's high from running all those fucking hills, from running all those laps, from one, running for miles. I can't tell you how much I hate running. I abhor running. But that's why I do it more than I need to. That's why I do it more than is required. Because there is a sense of satisfaction. There's a sense of accomplishment. There's a sense of being right when you do the things that are challenging. Because you build an, on that obsession with the process of success. And then after a while, you figure out, shit, this is more enjoyable than game time. Game time is great. The, ch the championship is everything. But... The hours spent working out, the hours spent perfecting your craft, whatever that is, the hours that you put in, the blood, sweat, and tears, that is where the enjoyment comes. That is where you feel you're most alive. But also, that is where the sauce gets made. And by the time we show up on the scene, we got so much sauce that it looks natural. It looks easy. It looks like... We were uh, blessed with the sauce from the gods. All the while, the betas, the self-proclaimed non-select, and the onlookers, they just showed up, bought a ticket to the championship game, sat down, and marveled at the presentation that they're taking in. They marvel at the sauce that we drip as the select. All the while wondering, damn, why can't I do that? Why, why can't I get uh, what he's got? Well, first of all, there's no such thing as participation pussy. Let me say that one more time. Maybe, maybe somebody didn't hear it. There's no such thing as participation pussy. You don't get it just because you showed up with a degree, uh, a house, a car, a passport, and a hundred thousand dollars in the bank account. You don't get participation push. You'll get transactional push. You get transactional transactional sex, but you will not get that passion. You will not get that primal sex. You will not get that she's ripping off your clothes at the door sex. She's meeting you in the parking structure on a lunch break to get that diamond dick that daddy dick and lo and behold the demon dick and yes we talk about women but that's not the primary focus i'd like to think that by now men would have gotten the idea that women are not necessarily the focus of our discussions but a byproduct of what we've accomplished a byproduct of the stories that we tell of our successes a byproduct of us going after our passions because when a woman senses passion in you and can observe the result of your passion and not necessarily the result of your participation, that is what draws her to you. That is what draws her to want to submit to your presence and submit to your mission. Gentlemen, I could go on for hours. And I, I didn't intend for this podcast to go this long, but you know how it gets when I get hit with that ASP Holy Ghost. I got to testify in the Tetal Tabernacle. But I want to say this lastly. Men in this space, men who have stories, 
men who enjoy the journey, all have one thing in common. At some point in our lives, and it's never too late to do this, but at some point in our lives, we became obsessed with the process of success. And as a result, we live life unapologetically alpha because we put in the work in our past. We continue to put in the work in our present and we look forward to more work in the future because that is the obsession that drives the sauce of the select. As always, this is your man Cousin T aka the Alpha Wingman saying, stay sharp. Emission focus. Later.